Hello, everyone. If I could have your attention for the next 15 minutes and then I promise we'll be done, that would be great. I'll try to limit this to 15 minutes. I'll go as quickly as possible. There's a lot to acknowledge here. But hi, everyone. I'm Hannah. I work at Activision, but more relevant, I'm the chair of the Grux uh, IGDA SIG, a Games Research and User Experience Special Interest Group of the IGDA. I was just going to wait until they became part of Xbox. Well, Xbox, well, yeah, it went through. As is tradition. <laughs> All right, let's try this again. I'm gonna close out today with a bit of information about the SIG and update from the steering committee and a whole lot of thank yous peppered in. So first of all, I want to thank all of you so much for attending the 12th annual um, Games You Are Summit of the SIG. Um, this is a milestone for us and this is our first time doing a hybrid SIG. So thank you so much. Um, I hope you all met some cool people saw some cool talks and learned something about Grux. Um, and yeah, thank you all for being here. I'd also like to thank our parent organization, the International Game Developers Asso Association, or IGDA, who support individuals who create games and support groups like ours. All right, first round of thank yous. Next, I want to first thank our sponsors who made this event possible. These are companies who have been our top tier sponsors for this year. So I'd like to thank Activision, Amazon Games, and Amazon Web Services. Pause. <laughs> oh, don't worry, there'll be a lot of clapping. We don't have to do that quite yet, um, unless you want to. Uh, we would also like to thank Games User Research, Xbox, Riot Games, Solston, and UX is fine. And lastly, we want to thank Player Research, Playtest Cloud, Interpret, Entertainment Arts and Engineering Games User Research Lab, and Automated Recruiting and Communication System from Marketing Systems Group. Thank you all so much for sponsoring this year's summit. All right, so now we're on to some of our updates, starting with our annual KPIs for our three platforms. Our first is our official Twitter account uh, run by Sublong. Thank you so much, Sub. Um, as you can see, it's grown a lot over the years since its inception in 2013. We're at just under 6,000 followers. Um, this account shares things like Games UX content, events, research, um, SIG news, and occasional hot takes. If you don't follow already, feels, uh, well, you can't really access the QR code, so don't actually use that QR code, but you can find us on Twitter at GamesUR. Um, also a friendly reminder to please remain professional on Twitter. I know that goes without saying, and most of you are like normal people and like not rude on Twitter, but um, that stuff matters. It's a great resource for game developer conversations and games user research, but um, it's also very public, just like the Discord. So please remain respectful. Um, as you can see here, we don't have any data for our 2020 year um, for any of our KPIs and nothing went right that year, including us tracking our KPIs. Our second KPI for measuring growth of the group is our LinkedIn group. For those who don't know our history, this group started in 2009 by Bill Fulton. It was a small group of games user researchers. Um, this is the official way to join the um, community, by the way. So this is important for things like running for the elections, which is open, by the way, and I'll talk about later, um, and also voting in elections. So if you're interested in either of those things, you'll want to join the um, LinkedIn group. Again, not through the QR code because it's blocked, um, unfortunately. <laughs> um, 
But yeah, so also I want to point out, I see this very often when folks request to join this LinkedIn group, it is limited to working professionals or academics. So that's game developers, anyone who has a professional interest in games user research and games user experience, um, and also academics who do games research or something affiliated with that, and students who are looking to break into the field. Um, it's very, very important that you indicate on your profile that you are interested in games user research in a professional capacity. This is the top reason why we would reject anyone who's looking to join the group. Um, that being said, even though you can see we have a lot of growth here, it's probably our least active platform in terms of posting because LinkedIn kind of sucks. So you'll see here on our next slide when we talk about Discord, um, that is much more active. Um, if you have questions about why this is our official way to join the community, um, but it, it's also like our least active platform, I can talk about that more later because that's silly. All right, so the Discord, which is our most active platform, is founded by Ben Tails back in 2017. Thank you, Ben. Um, it has grown quite fast. As you can see, we have almost 4,000 members. Uh, we welcome anyone who's professionally interested in games user research and games experience, uh, designers, academics, um, folks who work alongside us, like operations. Um, for information on how to join, you might be able to use that QR code. You can try. But that will bring you to our website and give you information on how to join us. Also, I apologize in advance for the onboarding. All right. So next, we have a whole lot more thank yous. Uh, this next section, we'll spend time acknowledging the folks who have helped this event be the best that it could be. Like I said, this is our first hybrid event, which is awesome. It's been very successful. Uh, this takes up a good portion of the presentation because there are just simply so many folks to thank. There are so many talented, passionate folks here. Um, to steal the words of James Berg, uh, the community is not only for us, but it is by us. So we encourage anyone who is interested in hosting any sort of social events um, or has any ideas for how the community can be enhanced or improved, please let us know in the Discord. Um, take a steering committee member, um, get your voice out there. We are always looking for ways to improve the community and we wanna empower anyone who's interested in improving it to do so. Um, lastly, as I'm going through the thank yous here, um, I would like folks who are present to stand if they're comfortable. Um, we would like to recognize you and appreciate you appropriately. Um, I will not be naming all of the names because there are simply too many. Um, so let's get to it. First, I would like to thank our co-directors, Luke Frazier, Frazier and Triscoll DeHaven. These fantastic folks organized our first hybrid summit, our most inclusive summit yet. So please stand if you're present and uh, join me in giving them a round of applause. Next, I would like to thank our Games UR Summit leads. If you're ple uh, present, please stand. Next, I would like to thank our summit assistants. If you're present, please stand. And our summit volunteers, both on site and virtual. Um, if you're on site, please stand. And um, folks who may or may not be here are content reviewers. These are folks working behind the scenes every year to review all of the content we have um, that is submitted, which is a lot. So thank you all for your efforts as well. And if any of you are present, please stand. All right. So next, I want to talk a little bit about what the steering committee has been up to. We do things despite um, not always being very visible. Um, I want to um, talk about all of the things we've done in this past year since, like I said, our election season is upon us. So we'll be switching over and transitioning a bit. But I just want to take a moment to acknowledge them all. Starting with John Hobson's salary survey. So a lot of you were probably here for that. 
Um, this has been a question that the steering committee has been asking ourselves and discussing for a long time, which is how can we better serve our seniors? How can we entice our seniors to be within the community? Um, our goal is to first take that step to answering that. And that is what John um, started and led that initiative. So thank you so much, John. Next, another initiative led by Zan Smith. Um, a goal of ours has been to bring together the subcommunities who are not as recognized regularly as they should be. And by this, I'm talking about our academic community. So a lot of our industry professionals get a lot of recognition, um, a lot of attention, a lot of the initiatives are for them. But we have been asking ourselves, how can we better serve these other communities, this in particular, um, and bring them together? So Zan has been leading this initiative called Academic Lab Meetings. And that is a monthly meeting switching between different time zones to try to be as inclusive as possible where folks get together, they talk about the research they're doing, they're talking about research ideas that they want to execute as their way of networking among each other. So thank you so much, Zan, for doing that. All right, next is our harassment policy amendment. Um, this is initiative that was uh, started and executed by Elizabeth Zelli, a former steering committee member. Um, thank you, Elizabeth. Um, but this has been amended. So as we've grown as a community, we've actually realized that even though we're a huge community, we actually, the longer you're in this community, the more you get to know everyone. And we realize that when it comes to reporting things like harassment, a very sensitive topic, um, that can be very difficult when people who are veterans or seniors tend to know each other. So what we decided to do was we wanted to bring in a third party member who is also a designated responder, but it is not part of our community. Um, and that is Dana Ware from the Women in Game SIG. Um, so that is something we did. Uh, the designated, res designated responders, if you're curious, are currently myself and Jimmy Zo. So that is one way we address this to make this uh, process of reporting harassment a bit more hopefully approachable. Something else we did was that we added an anonymous uh, submission option in our Google form um, when you are reporting any sort of harassment, whether it's on the Discord or it's here at a SIG event. Um, so hopefully that will also make it, you know, a little more approachable because this is a very difficult topic, right? It, like no one likes reporting stuff like this or talking about it. So thank you, Jimmy, for that amendment and leading that initiative. All right, Grux office hours. So this was spearheaded by John Hobson um, before my time as the chair, but we wanted to continue this into a, a court, doing quarterly office hours. So this is a way for us to address our very high demand for our mentorship program. Uh, we often have a backlog log of mentee applicants and we can almost never get through them. So this is our way of addressing that doing quarterly office hours where the steering committee and any member of the community um, who is mid-level or above can sign up to be a mentor for a half hour, an hour, 20 minutes of their time. And it's a way to do just one-off quick mentoring with mentees and anyone who's looking to have a quick chat. Um, we've had a great turnout this last year. Um, so I really hope to see that continue in the future, but that's all of the steering committee. Um, that's all of our initiative, so. Next is the site FAQ. Um, so basically the last year, longer than last year, we've been seeing a lot of the same questions in the Discord channel for folks who are wanting to break in, folks who want to advance their careers and are more junior. Um, and we, like I said earlier in the presentation, really want to um, focus on retaining as many of our senior folks as possible. And we don't want them to feel taxed and like burn out from answering the same questions over and over. So what we did was we got together and looked at all the questions that compiled a list of questions that were asked over and over again. And we came up with our own answers for them um, and worked on this throughout the year and then posted it on our site as a resource for folks who are looking to break in or enhance their careers. Um, and this initiative was led by Jack Dunn, Colin Wheelock, and Lucy Neese. Thank you all so much. I also want to talk about our Grux mentorship program that's been going on for many years at this point, and it was initially developed by Steve Bromley. Um, now it is led by Jimmy Zoe, 
Charles Somerville and Zan Smith. Um, thank you all for keeping this going. It's on a quarterly basis. Um, it has developed so much over the years. I know it's a heavy lift um, and it's a lot of work. So thank you all for continuing to lead that. All right, just a couple more updates here. Um, something else we implemented was quarterly socials. So something we felt that was missing from our community was socializing outside of a purely professional setting like this. Um, and we wanted to do it that wasn't just in a text chat and discord. So we came up with these quarterly socials, which have had pretty good turnout so far. We've done things like uh, Gather Town and Gardic Phone. Um, so I encourage you to attend these if you're able to and interested. Uh, we'll be having one more before June 30th, which is the end of the quarter. And finally, I want to thank you, um, salary survey folks, um, for running this initiative since 2016. So that's Jonathan Dankoff, Andrew Menger Ogle, and Sebastian Long. Thank you all so much for doing this. This has been immensely helpful for so many folks in creating that calendar or calculator. So thank you all so much for that. Okay, just a quick couple housekeeping things and then we'll be done here. So I wanted to remind everyone that the steering committee elections are upon us. That process has begun. So we have self nominations that are open. You can get more information about that in the announcements channel of the discord. We have three outgoing steering committee members, Jimmy Zo, Jack Dunn and John Hobson. And then myself as chair does a one year term. The steering committee terms are two years. And then we will have Lucy Neese, Colin Wheelock, and Zan Smith stand for an additional year. I just wanted to take a second to thank all of the steering committee members for their hard work, especially our outgoing members who have served two years now. Um, but if you're interested, like I said, you can check out the announcements channel and the election, elections chat channel for more information. After that concludes the self-nomination, that will be May 31st at 11.59 PM Pacific then the elections will open June 1st and close on June 14th at 11.59 p.m. Um, and lastly, we are still looking for one more co-director for the 2024 summit. Um, so if you're interested in helping put this on next year, um, please contact myself, any of the steering committee members, any of the summit co-directors, Luke or Triscoll, um, if you're interested. So yeah, that concludes the chair update. Thank you all so much for attending and I hope you all had a great time.